Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, a little bit of housekeeping, please turn off your phones. Um, I think there's also a survey at the end here, but I'll ask Bessie to remind you of that when we get there. So it is my pleasure um, to kick off our series today of sessions about Google Play Games on PC, um, which is the new multi-platform product from Google, where our goal is to help you grow your business by easily distributing your games across mobile, tablets, Chromebooks, and now Windows PCs. So later today, you're gonna to have uh, the pleasure to hear about Come To Us and their success story, bringing their game Summoners War to PC. And immediately after that, uh, we'll have a tips and tricks session on uh, preparing your game for PC and passing our certification process. But first, my name's Aaron Hiscox. I'm a partner development manager at Google Play, where I work with some of the largest mobile game developers in the world. Before joining Google Play, I actually worked at Pocket Gems, which was around the corner, um, on the hit mobile game episode on War Dragons. And then before that, I worked at 2K Games on PC console games that you might know, like NBA 2K, Civilization VI, and others. Before handing over to my colleague, Bissy, um, I'd like to start our sessions today by talking about um, the business benefits of multi-platform. So, uh, no GDC presentation is complete without a really good story. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to Elsa. Um, Elsa is the, the name my four-year-old daughter chose when I asked her to pick the uh, fictional character for today's session. Um, Elsa is an executive producer on a hit mobile game that launched right before the pandemic and has been growing year over year. In a recent team meeting, uh, Elsa briefs everyone on the impact of the market on their game. Well, the highlight is that analysts expect the mobile games market to contract by roughly 6%. Conversely, she notes at the time, the PC games market is going to re uh, remain flat or even grow modestly. The takeaway for her and the team is that it's going to be a challenging year ahead, um, and they're going to need to think outside the box to really keep up with their revenue goals. So Elsa wears many hats in her role as an executive producer on a hit game, but one of her core responsibilities is uh, thinking about and managing game revenue and performance. So Elsa considers her options to, gr to, to drive growth in a down market. So she could first prioritize new in-game features um, that might improve engagement and ultimately in retention. She could look to boost monetization in her game, uh, maybe through more regular offers or live ops. And third, she could focus on driving new, 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 driving new user acquisition via paid media, uh, brand marketing, and the like. Ideally, Elsa and her team would do all three of these things, but she has a small team with limited bandwidth, uh, not to mention pre-existing bugs, half-finished features, and a host of other things to contend with. As she considers her options, Elsa hears about a new product from Google called Google Play Games on PC. Um, as she hears about it as part of the uh, Google for Games Developer Summit, which premiered last week online, and I actually recommend all of you to go away and watch those sessions later. The presentation introduces her to this new product from Google um, that will make it easier to bring her mobile game to PC with a dedicated desktop client, um, seamless cross-play, featuring opportunities across mobile and now PC, um, and it's all within the Google Play console that her team already knows how to manage, doesn't require them to go away and learn a new platform. And specifically, she pauses on this slide. Um, expanding her business laterally to more services would seemingly drive growth across all three of those hats or business areas we talked about earlier. Players who play on multiple devices engage for longer and for more often, which improves retention, creates more opportunities for monetization, and as a bonus, it comes um, with a new surface to acquire players. I'll admit that it can be very hard to rationalize pulling development resources away from mobile, especially at this time. But the long-term benefits, oh, thank you. You got it? Okay. Long-term benefits of expanding laterally speak for themselves. But do her players really want to play her game on PC? For years now, the game has been successful on mobile. Um, it's built for touch. It's designed to be snackable, um, even though session lengths have been getting longer. Um, and she doesn't think the core audience is likely to want to play her game on PC. 
which is when she comes across this slide. So in our research, um, mobile players want to access your, their favorite games across multiple surfaces. And that's as true in the US as it is in Korea, and potentially even more so in markets like Brazil and Indonesia. And the type of player who wants to play uh, mobile games on PC is as, is as diverse as the mobile ecosystem itself. Let's assume that Elsa's game is a merged game and it falls somewhere between casual and mid-core. Her audience would almost certainly fall into this persistent puzzler bracket, um, who in our research were excited for playing their favorite game uh, and seeing their favorite characters on a larger screen, looking for an easy to use platform that has security features built in that they can trust, and then they want to do some measure of multitasking, maybe watching a YouTube video, maybe working while they crush candies or merge minions or whatever it is they're doing. On top of that, Elsa remembers that at one time, some of her players were asking about a PC version. Um, not to mention influencers and streamers that they regularly work with who would love the opportunity to be able to stream directly from PC. And then she thinks that, you know, maybe there'll be a chance to acquire new players on this platform. It helps that at this point, you know, Elsa starts to see uh, Google Play games in all sorts of places. Most notably on the Google Play Store on mobile. Google has been leaning in very regularly to really help drive user adoption for games that are on both platforms. And we're investing in regular prominent featuring placements on both mobile, web, and game-specific notifications so that our billions of users know that these games are available on PC. Not to mention other bespoke custom marketing campaigns, and for example, even re recently featuring Google Play games on Google Search. There's also an ecosystem-wide effort to expand to more devices and services with some of Elsa's biggest competitors already making the jump to PC, and many more coming later this year. The catalog you see here actually represents 150 billion monthly minutes of gameplay on mobile and hundreds of millions of active players uh, across mobile and PC. Similarly, we've actually been able to lower CPU and GPU requirements so that more players, anybody from a, using a standard uh, laptop with integrated, um, integrated graphics card or even something more high-end should be able to play these games really well. Okay, so perhaps there is a business case for multi-platform and it feels like a solid investment for the team to future-proof their game. Um, and certainly as more and more games launch across uh, mobile and PC, it's something to keep an eye on. But how much work is actually required? Um, how will this affect uh, pre-existing roadmaps? How much engineering time are they gonna have to dedicate to moving to PC? And the answer to this really does depend on your game. Um, fortunately, Elsa catches the sessions immediately after this one where my colleagues uh, Patrick and Andrew will elaborate on um, a success story from come to us and how you know, their experience bringing their game to PC. And we'll also go through um, some of the other integration requirements and recommendations. Before that though, I think it's always helpful to hear from your peers in the industry who have already made the decision to jump to PC and hear about more about their rationale for doing so. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for listening to Elsa's story. Uh, and it's my pleasure to welcome up my friend Bissy and two of our top developer partners to elaborate on why they're making the jump to multi-platform. So thank you. All right, thanks uh, Aaron for walking us through, you know, the vision of Google Play Games on PC. And as Aaron said, it's always helpful to hear from people who are actually working to build the vision. Um, so I want to introduce our two speakers today. Um, first, we have Mia. Mia is the Chief of Staff and Director of Business Development for IM30, where she co collaborates closely with the CEO to steer the company's strategic direction and oversee its day-to-day -day operations. Um, her responsibilities include product, uh, project management, external facing marketing, intellectual property and business, as well as leading the company's efforts in overseas business development. Uh, Mia graduated from New York University with a master's degree 
and she has a demonstrated track record of building and leading high performance team, driving revenue growth, and delivering innovative solutions that cater to the needs of customers in today's rapidly evolving digital landscape. It's Mia. Yeah, thank you, BC. <laughs> uh, and then we have Simon. Simon leads Kabam Central Operations across four studios in North America and one in Seoul, Korea, as a chief operations officer. Before joining Kabam, Simon played a key role in NetMarble's Western expansion and operational efforts, serving as the chief technology officer, uh, chief operations officer, and president of NetMarble US. And Simon has over 25 years of experience in business leadership, artificial intelligence research, and software development. Simon holds a Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science, a master's degree in artificial intelligence, and uh, a PhD in artificial intelligence from Pusan National University in Korea. Um, and then Thank I'd you. like to, in oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, DC. <laughs> Thank you, Simon and Mia. And um, just to quickly introduce myself, I am a strategic partner manager at Google. Um, and in my role there, I work with some of the top uh, game developers and industry thought leaders, helping them to you know, drive revenue growth and to launch new titles. Um, and to innovate in, in every way we can in the gaming industry. So thank cool. you, Simon and Mia, for joining me um, and for talking about Google Play Games on PC. Mm. Just wanted to ask you a couple of questions um, about multi-platform in general mm. and what led you guys to, to, to join the platform. Um, so I know for, for both Kabam and I am 30, multi-platform has been a key pillar for the past few years of your strategy. So what factors help you recognize really the significance of the opportunity? Uh, yeah, uh, let me go first. Hello, I'm Simon Shim. Uh, Kabam, known as a, a mobile first game studio, right? We have a Marvel Contest Champions and Disney Mirrors and Sharp Titans. We have uh, hundreds of millions of players that have been playing our games. We always watch users' behavior and also trend. So cross-platform, multi-platform uh, is, uh, we think is a very uh, strong potential for our cross. Uh, I would say three different pers three perspectives we have. The first perspective is that mobile gamers' behavior was changed. As we know, uh, during the pandemic, Actual mobile gamers have more time to uh, more time to spend with the PC and console together, along with the mobile device, right? So we launched uh, Sharp Titans on cross-platform uh, during the pandemic. It shows a uh, very, very positive feedback from users and also uh, strong engagement metrics. And secondly, uh, PC or console platform also involved, like uh, Google Play uh, on PC today. PC, even console platform company, can support live ops and also free-to-play business model. We are free-to-play uh, mobile gaming studio, so uh, especially other platform, if they not fully support these features, we need to rethink about different SKU and different monetization model by platform, right? But now, the platform support those uh, features. So as a studio perspective, uh, it's gonna be easier to rethink about approaching multiple platforms. Uh, thirdly, software and hardware also improved. As we know, game engine level now support many, many cross-platform related features. So it's getting easier to make uh, multi-platform games. And also, even mobile device is improved a lot. So if we think uh, uh, support a great quality of PC experience, we can deploy Delay, we, can, we can provide a similar quality of service or fun to mobile device at once. So all of those things, uh, consideration, uh, considering those things, we think uh, cross-platform is very, very important and strong potential for us. That's my answer. <laughs> Makes sense. Mia, do you have anything to add or similar? Uh, yes, so um, this is Mia from the M30. So in M30, uh, we always believe the core base of the uh, gaming industry is still the service. Mm. So where the player is, where the service should be followed. Mm. Since the players have the different time of portion on the different devices, um, and the, I think the um, cross platform uh, development already become a common uh, trend now. Mm. So as an Android developer like us, we are very excited that the GPG could launch and it allows us to uh, release our mobile gaming on uh, PC application scenarios. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, the, you know, the delivery is easier, more convenient, and the lower cost. Mm. So I think the GPT is a game changer, right? Mm, mm, yeah. Uh, it's a game changer. So. It not only allows the players to switch up their mobile game on the different devices, but also uh, provide a cost-effective way for the players and uh, the developers to explore the new gaming things. That is really help, and it's a big deal uh, for I think in the huge potential for us. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Well, thank you so much for uh, giving us some insights into the kind of the, the process you went through as you thought mm -hmm. about cross-platform. Um, so I want to talk about, you mentioned some of the top titles um, that Kabam makes, and mm -hmm. those are very big in the U.S., also mm -hmm. big uh, in Western Europe. Uh, I Am 30 also has a big presence in the U.S., but um, you know, a large uh, user base in APAC. So I was wondering if you guys could talk about you know, how cross-platform either you know, engages an existing global audience or facilitates international expansion. Mm. Let me go first. So Kabam, <laughs> I will give, make okay. sense to you first. So, so Kabam always known as a, a big uh, IP franchise game and also Shop Thailand is an original IP game. But we always are uh, watching APEC market as a strong potential uh, of expansion, right? So, but when we see the APEC uh, gamers, there's a cultural things and there's environment things uh, you need to consider together. We also consider. The cultural things is that the, the APEC gamers, culturally, they are allowed, they are more acceptable about playing games in, even in public place or office if you have either time, right? So, uh, and also environment and things, uh, APEC is more like a city-based, centralized, uh, you know, city-based country. So there's a great Wi-Fi or air signal environment over there. So all of that combined, uh, APEC gamers are showing a uh, way longer uh, play time and play session. So uh, Kabam, we think if we provide cross-platform uh, experience to APEC gamers, uh, definitely we have more chance to expand our fan base audience to the APEC market. Mm. So we've been keep closing watching and Kabam will launch more games uh, to supporting cross-platform in the future. Yeah. Uh, so when the same answer this question, there is Chinese slang coming to my mind. Mm. So um, if you want to be a rich, just uh, go build the road first. So where is the highway in the world of the gaming industry? Mm. I think the GBG provides a road not only a road, but also a cross-platform and cross-regional highway. Um, so we just mentioned Lysa Shelter. Uh, we actually, we produce, um, we have uh, released three games on the GPG. Lysa Shelter, The Rise of the Empires, and Lysa Fortress. Um, actually, the performance of Lysa Shelter in single platform or single market is not standing out. But you add up the entire platforms, and just to look at the global marketing, we're actually doing good. So our point is more and more players will involved in our games by cross-platforms effect. So um, actually, um, besides the mobile gaming market, the GBGs also help us to attract more players who prefer to spend more time on the PCs as well. And, uh, for the international expansion. So picture this, if a game only available on the mobile site, mm -hmm. maybe because of the, some reasons like the performance of the different devices, the user's habits different from the uh, place to place. I think the number of the DAU, the retention, and the revenue are totally different from place to place. Mm -hmm. But the GPG came in and break down uh, this phenomena and uh, help to prevent, uh, prevent the players when they get access to the um, mobile gaming. So um, that has really helped us to do the global market. And uh, for the existing audience and the players, uh, Last Shirley is a vertical uh, mobile game, but when we port it to the PC, uh, we, change, we change it to the horizontal. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a PC requires a big frame that display more details like the in-game roadmap, the team adjustment, and the airlines, the season battles. Mm -hmm. So 
the players can see more details on the PC side, the big screen, and they will provide the comfortable and the clean vision to help them won't miss any hints and clues to help them to win the game. So that is also really helpful for us. Just like um, Aaron said, um, the number of the, uh, uh, the retention increased a lot. Actually, when we transfer from the uh, PC, uh, transfer from the mobile phone to the PC, the retention and the revenue also increased a lot. I, I think what I'm hearing from both of you is just like it was a matter of understanding your users in different markets and also kind sure. of the infrastructure and technology that sure. goes along with that. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting yeah. to hear. Um, so I know you mentioned, you know, uh, you're thinking about uh, cross-platform in many different ways. How do you evaluate which games should be on which platforms? Yeah, Mia yeah, first. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so um, uh, when it comes to the online, the, 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 the games, um, what I said before, I'm 30 believes that um, to, uh, you have to provide a service in any time and everywhere uh, if the players need. So we focus on the SLG game. The SLG game is very perfect for the uh, cross-platform. So the multiplayer strategy our uh, game requires a large frame to show more details, more details just like what I said before. And uh, the players, they having a big screen uh, on the PC platform is so important. So it pro provides a comfortable and a clean vision for them. So that is really help. So SLG is much more better for the mm. cross platform, yeah. Mm. Mm. Let me share Kabam's perspective. Mm. So we, when we approach a cross platform, we consider like a, obviously the, the genre of game, definitely. And also, as Mia mentioned, control of a big screen versus a small screen, right? And also control, a uh, way of control. And also the game mechanic, what Mia, you said SNG is good fit for uh, you know, cross platform. Uh, depend on game mechanic, it may good fit or may not. Mm -hmm. We also think about the how what was the user behavior across all the different platform users uh, play each other, against each other, right? And lastly, the experience of new platform or expertise of new platform. We are developing games, so internal team, do we have a capability to fully uh, uh, match or meet the new platform user's experience, right? Those things are big consideration from Kabam side. Uh, when we approach cross-platform, Kabam internally have a different uh, approach, have a different lay layer of approach. For example, totally uh, the beginning of a cross-platform is just a franchise expansion uh, using similar qua toy, qua fun, but different platform with the different apps, mm -hmm. right? So, but provide a similar experience across all different platforms. The higher level, much higher level is the cross-cross, we would say. Uh, the growth of the game will be shared, but uh, mobile player not play against with the PC. Mobile player play against with mobile player. PC user player play against with PC or console. Uh, the the top is the level of a cross platform support. Is we would say is a cross play. So uh, when we approach a new game, uh, considering cross platform. Uh, we are thinking those aspects together. For example, if the game has a real-time multiplayer PvP mechanic, is quad toy, then uh, it may be very sensitive about ping speed uh, or uh, the user control, uh, effectiveness of control will be uh, very uh, seriously impacted about win-lose, right? So that genre maybe studio need to rethink about how we approach cross-platform or cross-play, right? If we approach uh, simulation or single play game or asynchronous based PvP mechanic, then we may can fully support cross cross and cross play. Uh, so again, our game, one of our games, Sharp Tyrant, is a simulation based uh, crafting game. Uh, we think it's a good match with the support cross platform and cross play, cross cross. So it shows a uh, uh, very, very positive feedback from users and also shows a strong uh, in-game metrics. So this is a part of innovation. We think it's part of innovation at the same time, part of a product production. And also it may help us a, a lot of business opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. 
Um, so you both talked about this mm. a little bit in your other answers, but um, you're both mobile first de uh, developers, mm. and so you obviously had a lot of experience with mobile, and then you're expanding into this you know, new multi-platform world. Mm. What would you say have been you know, your biggest learning in terms of users or the gameplay as you, you know, make more cross-platform games? Okay, Simon yeah. first. Uh, first? <laughs> yeah, first. <Okay. laughs> Thank you, so let me go first. So as I mentioned, uh, Sharp Tyrant of our game was the first game go to PC uh, platform. It launched the mobile first, and we launched it last year. We launched Steam and Epic Store. And the game is crafting-based simulation games. So as I mentioned previously, uh, answer, uh, this is a good match. We think it's a good match with the support cross-cross and cross-play. And the, the gamers, uh, players appreciate a lot of our games. And uh, we actually compare mobile-only users, players, versus uh, mobile PC cross-platform uh, players. Uh, mobile PC cross-platform players just shows uh, more than 10 to 15% higher long-term retention rate. And also 20% higher LTV compared with mobile-only users, players. So, uh, we are very exciting, and also uh, users' play time and engagement uh, uh, is increased a lot. So this is a part of our learning. Uh, we will keep, uh, you know, monitoring users' behavior and play pattern. We will apply more uh, games to the cross-platform, and then there's uh, some news will coming within this week, even from Kabam. Stay tuned. Yeah. Mia. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, as an independent developer like us, we are mm. trying to meet uh, everyone's needs. What I said, the service should be followed. But actually, in the reality, it's very hard to satisfy everyone. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so um, we learned a lot. And the, the important thing is the um, precise demand matching is the key. So there are two priorities. The first one is you have to focus on a specific platform. Like us, we are focused on the Android smartphone. And you have to make sure uh, you have a solid understanding uh, of the game design concepts that works best for that platform. And the second priority is you have to ad uh, adapting to the difference of the cross-platform development. And uh, maybe there is a ton of the difficulties you have to overcome. But for the players, it's worse to do that. Yeah, yeah. that is my answer. But I want to do a small advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> I said uh, we have three games was released on the GPD. Last Shelter, Rise of Empires, and the Last Fortress. Last Shelter and Last Fortress will have the IP collaboration this year. And we also will do it on the GPD. So please pay more attention to us. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. Congrats. <laughs> Let me also advertise yeah. one thing. Yeah, the <laughs> Almost time. forgot. Uh, Sharp Tyrant also will come in uh, Google Play on PC, and definitely, and more gaming from Kaban will also come in. So stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I think we're really excited to work with developers who believe in the vision, and we obviously strongly believe cross-platform cross is just, it's what users want, and it's kind of the future, so mm -hmm. we're excited to be along on this journey. Very exciting. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Thanks, guys. Thank you.